Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV at your service, to describe for you what is meant by the term parasitic element in an antenna system. A parasitic element is not at all the same as parasitic oscillation, which you may have heard about in relation to linear amplifiers in particular. But what a parasitic element is, is it's an, an element or a length of wire or conductor that you can place near a dipole or other conventional radiating antenna. What I've shown here is a half wave dipole viewed directly from the side. There's your feed line to your radio. And because the feed line, when you transmit, drives energy into that element, it is sometimes called a driven element. And the radiation pattern from such an antenna will be maximum at right angles to that element, not only to the left and the right in this drawing, but also towards you and away from you, and in all directions in a plane perpendicular to this axis, the axis of the antenna, which in this drawing goes right up and down on your screen. So you can imagine a plane perpendicular to your screen and passing right through that point at the center. That's where the maximum radiation and response will occur from this type of an antenna. Well, you can get a little bit of gain with respect to a dipole antenna by adding what they call a parasitic element. And there's two ways to do that. The first way that I will show you is an, a method called adding a director to the element. A director, and they call it a director because it tends to direct the energy, the radiation and response, in the direction relative to the driven element that it is placed at. If you place a director like this, a, a, a directing element approximately one-eighth of a wavelength, now it can vary somewhat, but about an eighth of a wavelength from the driven element parallel to it, and then if you make that thing about 95 percent as long as the driven element then what you will end up with is this effect, three or four or five, sometimes maybe you might get six dB. I don't think you'll get six dB. Three or four decibels with respect to a dipole of effective radiated power gain in this direction at the expense of all the other directions. So the radiation uh, and response pattern of this type of an antenna would look something like this and there's little some little blobs like that going off but mainly in the direction of the director and they call it a director be and all you need to do with this is you don't feed it or anything you just take a conductor make it that long about 95 percent of the length of the driven element and just place it near it you can do that with a structural uh, design or anything like that you know a wooden um, boom or mast or even a metal boom or mast in some cases you can get away with that. There's another way to do that too. You can place a similar element behind the driven element or on the other side of it so and again get radiation and response mainly in that direction. They call it an element like this a reflector because it acts in such a way as to direct the energy back away from itself, you make this thing about 105% of the length of the driven element, or about 5% longer. And again, you can place it approximately one-eighth of a wavelength away from the driven element. Now, I have uh, done another video in which I give you some more precise parameters for designing antennas like this. You can add both a director and a reflector to your antenna and get what they call a three element Yagi or Yagi 
OODA antenna. You have a director in front, the driven element, and the reflector behind it. And you arrange them so that they look sort of like a, uh, like a letter H with an extra vertical line in the middle. And that's your driven element. That's where you provide the energy and where you take the signal from. And you can sometimes get around six or seven decibels of gain with respect to a dipole antenna using this kind of an arrangement. There are other parasitic arrays, as they are called, parasitic arrays, one of which is the venerable quad antenna, which uses a full wavelength loop as the driven element and slightly smaller and larger loops as the director and the reflector. They call that a quad. So Yagi's and quads are very popular among amateur radio operators, especially at the frequency bands of 14 megahertz and above, although you will occasionally see them at 7 and 10 megahertz. And once in a great while, you'll get a real megalomaniac who will build a Yagi or a quad for the 75 meter and 80 meter bands at 3.5 megahertz. I have actually remember reading an article in QST magazine many years ago about someone who actually built an 80 meter quad parasitic array. I believe it had two elements, if, I, if my memory serves. You might look that up. You might go to the uh, ARRL QST archives and look that up. I'm sure it's in there. Stan Jibalisco, W1GV, Whiskey One, Good Vibrations, saying 73 for now and so long.